it is Lisa Leak with 100 Days of Real Food. Hopefully you can see me and hear me. I've got the whole family here. Everyone's here. We, what, somebody, <laughs> she's missing. She's actually about to go missing because she has a lot of homework in middle school. But um, I wanted to hop on and have you guys join us as we make cottage pie tonight. It's a very, very easy comfort food type dish perfect for this time of year but first we want to tell you the little story as to why we are making the cottage pie so we partnered with ancestry and we did their ancestry dna kits it was such a cool experience you basically get a little tube and everyone put their spit in there hello tammy i'm glad that you could uh, you can hear us. Um, you guys give us a thumbs up to make sure you can hear us okay. But anyway, so you basically spit in a little tube, which the girls thought was very fun, and then you send in your results, and then you can access online to see what your heritage is. So um, I also want to make sure I tell you guys that you're going to get 10% off. We're partnering with Ancestry to do this tonight. And if you go to the link I shared, Ancestry.com slash 100 days, you can get 10% off. This is honestly such a great gift for those like hard to buy for people. I got it for my mom last year um, because she's one of those people. She's probably watching. But anyway, <laughs> um, it was just really fun to get all of our results and see how they compared. And I'm going to show you guys what those results look like. So what we learned is that we are definitely uh, from a European heritage. So you can see this is for Jason, my husband. And right here you can see we uh, are British. The leak family side is British, more than 55%. And you can see it kind of highlights the um, ones that are filled in show where like most of his heritage is from. And then the ones that are just a circle are just like the less so areas, and so we decided to make cottage pie to honor that, but it was kind of fun to see how all of us compared. Um, we learned that the kids each got 50% um, from each parent, but they each get different parts of each parent. So since Sienna and I have um, a similar personality, it was interesting to see that her DNA was more similar to mine. And then you can also go online and connect with other people who have taken uh, the test and you can find who, you know, your cousins might be related um, close or far. So hi there from Australia. Hi Adele and Katie from Vancouver. Thank you so much for joining us. And Nancy from Staten Island. So anyway, it was fun to see, um, you know, who your relatives might be that are already on Ancestry and it confirms that, you know, the children are in fact ours. <laughs> no surprises we there. Sure about this one. No, uh, no mix-ups at the hospital, which, you know, we weren't expecting any surprises there, but we thought that would be really interesting if someone did get a surprise. So as I said, I gave this to my mom for Christmas and I it didn't show her as my relative. And so I was like, uh, is there anything you want to tell me? And it turns out she hadn't actually done hers yet. Yet. So I also learned that um, almost half my heritage is Jewish from my mom's side, which I thought was really interesting because I often think of that as uh, a religion and not, you know, part of your ethnic ethnicity. That's not an easy word to say or part of your culture. So, um, you know, lots of interesting things that we learned. So I want to make sure I'm not missing anything important. Oh, yeah. Ancestry.com slash 100 days if you want to try it and get 10% off. So, what do you do with your results? Um, we thought it would be fun to cook a meal inspired by our heritage. So, again, Jason Leak here, the Leak heritage is British, and we're going to make cottage pie. I have a fun fact to tell you about cottage pie. Um, you can make it with ground beef, which makes it British, or you can make it with ground lamb, which makes it a uh, shepherd's pie, which is Irish. So we're, of course, going to do the British version, and I'm going to hand over the phone to Jason. Um, Sienna's going to be in charge of the mashed potatoes that go on top. That's a very good job for her. Sydney, you're going to go do your homework, and Jason is going to record it. So if you guys have any questions about the Ancestry DNA or the recipe or anything else, 
just um, put it in the comments below. And Rhea, thank you for joining us. And hello, Heather from Seattle. It's fun to see where you guys are all from. Okay, so I'm gonna give this to you and you can turn it around. All right, guys, I'll do my best to answer your questions. I'll kind of pepper them throughout, um, but I'll uh, focus on Lisa's and Sienna cooking, of course. So you probably won't see much of me, but I'm glad you're all here and glad to be here. Yeah, so the only, the only thing, I wanna make sure you guys can hear me. The only thing I have done so far is I just um, scrubbed the potatoes. There's the little like scrubber that I use. I don't like to peel my potatoes because I think a lot of the nutrition is in the skin. So I scrubbed the potatoes. It and, tastes good too. Oh, you think the skin tastes good? Yeah. It's actually not not my favorite part. But, um, like but anyway, um, all I did was scrub them and chop them up and boil them. I kind of forgot about them while I was starting the video, but I think they'll be okay. And Sienna is gonna put them in here. Well, you put them in there. <laughs> well, Sienna's gonna mix them up. So why don't you tell what you're gonna add while I start so chopping them here. So I'm gonna some milk, so, salt, and butter to the potatoes and then mix it. So you add a fourth a cup of milk. And I, uh, she got out the, um, other type of measuring Well, I'm cup. used to getting out that kind. I know, but that this is for liquid. I thought this would be a fun thing to share. So at first she had this kind of measuring cup out and I was explaining to her, this is more for dry ingredients. So she's a good girl doing it in one of those measuring cups for um, wet ingredients. Was there a question or something? Yeah, a couple of questions. So um, Heather Bailey, uh, real quick about Ancestry. If you follow the link there, you can get 10% uh, off Ancestry.com. We all did it and shared our results. Uh, my heritage is overwhelmingly British, so we're making um, the cottage pie tonight. And uh, someone was asking how long it takes to get results. I think it's normally, um, close to six weeks. I always get a lot of questions of things that I, does that sound right to you, Jason? I think so, ours were I, expedited. Yeah, we had to do ours a little more quickly just because we wanted to have it in time for this video, but I think it's close to six weeks, but it was so easy. You literally just put in a tube and it was really, really cool. I mean, we thought that our kids would just like, you know, be the same basically, but even though they get 50% from each of us, they get different parts of your DNA. So it was really super interesting and I saw a lot of different um, cousins, like uh, it would tell you how closely you may be related to those cousins. I could see all of that online. So um, we thought this would be, I also thought it'd be fun if we had a British like drink or something, but we didn't really get too far with that. Well, I'll, I'll be having an IPA later. How yeah, about that? Well, that's nothing unusual. <laughs> so that's not really in honor of our heritage. <laughs> so I am just chopping an onion right now. And um, this recipe, again, it's, it's on my blog. I should have shared that link. It's on my blog is um, the Irish shepherd's pie, but since I'm using ground beef instead of lamb, that makes it cottage pie, which is British. So I'm just chopping up um, an onion. I'm gonna chop some garlic. I always like to use fresh garlic. I used to buy the garlic in the jar that's already um, minced for you, which is definitely convenient, but it does have uh, like a couple extra additives in there. Maybe it's just one additive, I can't remember, but I, I think fresh tastes better. So I like to um, mash the garlic before I chop it because it makes it cooperate. Hold on, I gotta give a shout out. Hey, Brianne, and uh, hey, Amy, Thank and you hey, Kieran. We got some friends on. That's cool. Oh, oh, those are people we know. Yeah. Oh, hey, lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, so, also, someone is asking about the accuracy, and they actually take 40 different uh, DNA samples, and then they give you the results based on that. So, uh, it depends on the region. We actually had a conference call about this, so. The short answer is it's it's pretty accurate and it's getting more accurate the more people do it and yes. and actually when you submit your sample as they add more information to the database your results may actually change and become more accurate over time yeah it'll you don't have to do anything else it just will like next time you check it'll be more updated there's over three million people who have done this so the more people who who do the test you know obviously will help them study the data and, and make it even more accurate and interesting. So we thought it was really fun. Again, I gave it to my mom because sometimes
sometimes, you know, especially as your parents get older, they kind of don't need more things and they would become, you know, interested in, in knowing their heritage. So, okay, so I've got garlic. I got, I have to remember what else. Okay, so this recipe, let me get this out of the way. Mommy, finish the potatoes. Oh, how, Man, why, don't you, why don't you do a taste test? Yay! Don't Those look steaming hot. Don't they are. Good. Yeah. Don't burn your lips. Oh, no. It's hot. Go. Good. Should have been using that tasting spoon, silly girl. Mommy, it needs cheese. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have cheese in, on this, in this recipe. Oh, what? So I'm just peeling some carrots. Um, I, this recipe calls for one large carrot, but and I even wrote this recipe, but sometimes I like to add extra vegetables just because we're not having like a salad or anything like that um, on the side. Um, let me think of what else you can do, Sienna. I guess, can you turn on the stove for me onto medium, please? Well, like, there's nothing on the stove. I hey, know, but just to heat up that Sienna, oil. Sienna, Brienne said hello to you. Oh, hi, Brienne. <laughs> um, okay, so aren't these pretty? These are like rainbow carrots. I get questions a lot on where I buy these, and I, I shop at Earth Fair, which is very similar to Whole Foods, and they just, they have them there. I don't know if I've ever seen them at just like a mainstream grocery store, but they are, they are fun just to add a little color. So I'm going to chop these carrots and, um, okay, so she's heating the olive oil and I'm going to chop celery. I didn't put extra celery because, I don't know, does anyone really love celery? I, I do. Celery. You really love it? Yeah. And we have someone who hates it over here. So I just, I'm just, I guess cooked celery is definitely better than raw celery in my opinion. And then what I have right here, um, well, actually, can you see this? We are going to use um, rosemary and thyme in this dish. And I e picked it. Yeah, she picked it. Even though it's winter here, those herbs in our herb garden, they last all winter. I know that some people have, like, loads of snow on the ground, and we were wearing, um, well, actually, she's wearing shorts right now. I don't think it's <laughs> quite short weather, but she thinks she's, you know, happy in that. But anyway, um, we don't, we're in North Carolina, so we don't get covered up with snow down here. We got like a centimeter. Yeah, we had a little night. dusting. Mm -hmm. So it's great because I feel like growing your own herbs is so easy. It is the easiest way to start growing your own food, in my opinion. And it saves you so much money because you know how a pack of herbs easily cost a couple dollars. And then you might not use it all before it goes bad. So, so you just spend a couple dollars on seeds or like little yes. starter plants. And exactly. And um, so you just spend that money on a plant and it's fresh and ready. Now I can't grow basil. Um, it's even a little too cold right the now. The oregano is still doing well. Yeah, the oregano is happy. Um, but like the basil is more of a summer herb. Um, it's a little too cold for cilantro. But like these hardier um, herbs are really happy out there. Okay, so we're gonna put this in the pan. I'm gonna put her on um, duty over here. I'm gonna throw all those vegetables in. Got an extra Okay, we had one comment that you can get the colored carrots at Kroger. Oh, good to know. We don't have Kroger here, so thank you for sharing that. Okay, remember, Sienna, keep your hand on the okay. pan. And Sienna's nine years old. She helps me cook a lot. Now, we had a couple of compliments on the kitchen, so thank oh, you for that. And to answer, I forget the name, this comment's already scrolled by, um, sorry about that, but uh, we did design it ourselves, pretty much. Um, we put a lot, a lot of thought in the kitchen. I'll tell you, one of my favorite things is, because um, I like to stand right here to chop, I love that the trash can is right here, and I love that um, we have like all of our spices and stuff right here. So well, we have some down here too. Yeah, we, we have some extra. It's just like kind of everything I need if I'm if I'm cooking. And don't dessert. forget about your stuff. If I know. So, <laughs> so anyway, okay. So she is gonna cook those vegetables, and you really you can't mess this up. You can do this without a recipe or being exact. It's you know it's not like you're baking. So um, she's gonna cook the vegetables for just two or three minutes, and then I'm gonna add the ground meat to the pan. So this is, um, can everybody hear me okay? This is from our local uh, farmer's market. 
and they sell all their meat frozen there for the most part. So I just pulled this out of the freezer two days ago. I find that one day overnight is not enough to fully defrost it. But anyway, this was like locally raised um, ground beef, but I don't really want to think about the origin right now. <laughs> But it's good to know where your food comes from. So we're going to put the ground beef in there, and then we're going to drain the fat, and uh, we're going to add some flour and broth, which essentially makes what's called a roux, R-O-U-X is how that's spelled, to kind of give you that thick sauce that you might normally get out of a can of cream of mushroom soup. So you definitely don't want to buy those anymore if you can help it. They're often full of additives and things. So um, this is a, an easy make from scratch way to do it. This broth, are you ready for the meat? Uh, I don't know. Here, hold, hold the pan. I think we'll do that another, uh, cook that another minute and I'll put the meat in. Anyway, this um, broth actually is another little homemade trick. Uh, what we do is we make one of my favorite recipes, it's on my blog, called the best whole chicken in the crock pot. Then you take all the good meat out, and anybody who's watching that's been a longtime follower, I'm sure you've done this. You guys can share in the comments if you've made this recipe. So you take all the meat out, leave all the bones, all the cooking juices, all the like junk, the carcass is an awful word, but you leave that in there, and then you just fill it with water, and you add um, a carrot, a piece of celery, I'm trying to remember what bay else. Leaf. A bay leaf. Onion. Thyme. Onion. Onion. Yeah. Did I say onion? Uh, okay, so you can't mess that recipe up either. And you just put the slow cooker on low. You could cook it overnight. You could leave it there for a couple of days if you run out of time. Then you just strain it, and we strain it into jars. But see how much is in there? I think we could have even filled it a little more. This is a free, are you ready for the meat? Yeah. That's a freezer safe jar. It doesn't have shoulders. So if you don't fill it all the way, it won't break. Okay, so let me put this meat in. So we got Veronica and Ashley have, have made the, the uh, homemade chicken stock. Isn't it the best? So what you're, what you're doing is you are making really, really wholesome stock out of things that you might have thrown away. You can use like carrot scraps. I threw, um, I threw this in the sink, but like you could, some people save in a Ziploc bag in the freezer, like the ends of their carrots and celery, and then they just go pull that out to make their um, broth. I'm going to wash my hands since I just handled some raw meat. I'm a big hand washer. You can check on her. Yeah, break up that meat with the... And so uh, we have Karina, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, from Portland, Oregon. We used to live in Portland and we love Oregon, so uh, shout amazing. out to you. Yes. And uh, she made a good point that the reason the sauce is so good is because of the spice mixture that's on the chicken. Oh, um, yes, yes. So, yeah, like, look how dark this is. I'm going to add a little water, actually. Um, and there's really not much salt in there. Most stock no, you buy like, from the store. There's no salt. There's tons of salt. Uh, so you yeah. always need to add extra salt. But the, and so just as I was getting the ingredients out, I had this frozen, and I just defrosted it, and it's ready to go when we are. Okay, so we're going to wait. And can I take a turn? Yeah. My your, turn. your arm's getting tired? Okay. So we are going to wait until this um, meat is all the way brown. And so, again, if you're just joining in... We, yeah, we'll have, she's smart. She's getting on a new spatula because um, we don't want to use the spatula that had the raw meat on it. Yeah, because it's starting to brown. Yeah, it's starting to brown. brown. Red. But, um, but if you're just joining us, we're making cottage pie because we had a really fun partnership with Ancestry to do their Ancestry DNA kit. And we found out that the leak, not yet, let's let it cook some more. The leaf side um, of our family. 50, that's me. That's Jason. <laughs> it's fifty-five percent British. So we thought it'd be fun to make a British recipe. So this is just vegetable saute. Uh, one more second. Vegetable <laughs> and ground beef. And then I'm going to sprinkle in some whole wheat flour. Okay, I think we're. In you know what, though, before I sprinkle in the flour, I want to drain off the fat. So this is my trick for draining off. I'm sure it's not my trick. I'm sure a lot of people do this. But to drain off the Wait, fat. Wait, there's an onion. Oh, it's okay. Onion. I just put the lid and then, like, leave a little, a little crack. And you don't ever want to put, like, cooking fat right down your, your drain. It will kind of 
can mess things up. So I'm just going to drain it. There's not a lot of fat on there. Drain it right into there. I'm going to save that for my husband for later. <laughs> That'll be like the standoff. Who's going to deal with the cooking fat? Let's Dad. buy this stove. So real quick, uh, we have some questions about the uh, cookware. Uh, do we prefer stainless steel? And we love um, all clad because it's, uh, it's really thick and uh, disperses the heat well, you don't get hot spots. Um, this we actually got when we were married, and you're not supposed to put it in the dishwasher because um, it's the anodization on the aluminum's coming off. It still performs great, but um, I think yeah, I think I wish I would have bought just I wish I would have bought them all like this. Yeah, like these are all stainless. Steel. I mean, I think there's aluminum inside. Uh, and, and by the way, I just added um, some flour, a little bit of whole wheat flour, to kind of thicken our broth, which we're going to add next. Yeah. Oh, we measure it. Will you measure out some salt for me? How much? Um, and Heather, in terms of uh, sticking, we use plenty of cooking fat when we cook, so we a half a teaspoon of salt. You don't, I don't we really often like, don't have trouble, like trouble with sticking. Stick. Okay, half a teaspoon. Yeah, half a teaspoon of salt. And my other daughter is doing her homework, so if you're just joining us, she's um, in middle school now and has a lot to do. So I'm just adding. I put the broth in. I put like a cup of my homemade you know, broth, stock, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to put in some rosemary. There's a half a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of salt. I put a little pepper in, all that good stuff. And then because I put the flour in there, why don't you, here, hold this handle. It's not going to take long at all to thicken. I don't usually get the girls to help me on um, school nights, so this is kind of a treat. Usually they're... Even though I still have a lot of homework. Yeah, she still has a lot of homework, but she doesn't have quite as much as my other daughter. Okay, so I think we did everything. Um, we just want it to thicken, yes. and then we're going to do the fun part. I love this little baking dish for this Pretty. Recipe. That's what I use for my mushroom farm to soak it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, look at this. So if you want to, this was broth a minute ago. And see it, how much liquid. Yeah, see how much it's already thickened right there? I think we're good. Let's turn it off. Just one more minute. I've turned it off already. That's, well, just, no, that's nice and thick. Okay. So you need to get can your. Can I try a bite? Can, can she try a bite? Please? Yes, of course. Okay, yeah, well. Definitely I think you can even add more vegetables. I mean, I oh yeah, my gosh, look at her. Oh, is that yeah. a sample bite? <laughs> yeah. You're going to burn your mouth. I know, I'm going to put it in the here, freezer. Here, put it in here. I'm going to put it in the freezer. Cool off. You're going to burn your mouth. So, okay. so we got uh, uh, Michael that joined uh, a little late. The Hi, difference Michael. between cottage and shepherd's pie, um, which is interesting, cottage pie is British and it has the uh, ground, ground beef. beef. Shepherd's pie is Irish and has ground lamb. Which would be equally good. So this is, um, I'm sorry, I forgot to share the link. If some resourceful person in the comments needs to share the link, that'd be great. This is on my blog as Irish shepherd's pie. And all I did was um, use ground beef instead of ground lamb. Same recipe. I added some extra carrots. I think we could even do more vegetables next time. And this is getting yeah. very close to right. So this is the fun part. Oh, I don't know what the fun part is. This is the fun part. Okay, we, wait. I need to go get my sample. I need, oh, I she's got to eat her sample. Important thing. So again, these are mashed potatoes. We left the peel on, which we normally do. It's good. Yeah, it has a lot of the nutrition. I okay, think. so Karina's saying shepherd's pie is actually Australian. <laughs> well, is she from Australia? Is she? I don't know. We have a Brit, uh, uh, Charlotte, saying cottage is beef and shepherds is lamb. Okay, well, at least we got that part right. <laughs> I, I looked it up, you know, and um, it was either Food Lovers Companion or, no, I think it was Joy of Cooking, which I trust. I love that cookbook. So, um, yeah, that Joy of Cooking is like for all the kind of staple it's dishes. It's huge. Yeah, it's huge. So we're, we're crediting them for that information. If it's wrong, it's their fault. So we had, yeah, that's my joy. It's, it's my second copy because the first one like fell apart. I use it so much. Um, okay, so we have our meat and our vegetables with that yummy sauce. So now here is the trick. I want to make sure I What's cover it all. The trick is we're going to stick this in the oven and you you have to kind of push down in here so you have like nice little peaks. I mean these aren't really peaks, but you want it to sort of the top of the mashed potatoes will brown the little parts that are coming up. 
and it will look so nice and pretty. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, I don't think we're going to have any leftover. My sixth grader already came home from school a little hungry. She, a lot hungry. Yeah, and she, she had, had bacon. She had some snacks that we had in the fridge. But anyway, so there we go. It'll look much prettier after I bake it. So I have it um, set at 400. And I'm just going to stick it in the oven, I think for like 20 minutes. I'm going to put it in the little oven. So, Lisa, have you done uh, sweet potatoes instead of regular oh, potatoes? Oh, I can tell you guys. Here, I'm going to turn the camera back. So, I, um, I have used sweet potatoes on this, but I made a taco pie. So, I um, made basically like the same kind of ground meat mixture, but I used taco seasoning. And that is on the blog, too. If you just go to 100daysofrealfood.com search taco pie and I put the sweet potatoes on top and that was really really yummy yes Julie you could freeze it at this point so if I was really smart I would have made like three batches of that and put it in my freezer but um, but anyway oh someone wants to do a, a mix of sweet and russet I don't know I don't know if I would personally love that but um oh jason do you have something else to add yeah there was a question earlier i didn't want to interrupt you but someone was asking uh, why we started our 100 day challenge in the very beginning oh okay well i will answer that question and then i will um let you guys go for the evening after that but the question was why did we start our 100 days of real food pledge in the first place so in 2010 um, we were honestly eating just like any other typical suburban family and we were basically eating the the standard american diet and then one evening this is back when oprah had her regular daytime show uh, she had michael pollan on talking about where our food comes from and i realized that just by hearing the title of the show that that was kind of scary because i had no idea and I watched it, I was intrigued, I went on to read his book In Defense of Food and it was just a huge wake up call. I mean, I literally lost sleep over what I would feed my family if um, goldfish and fruit snacks were no longer options. So we completely overhauled our diet and I just was doing so much work and research to figure it out that um, friends were asking a lot of questions so I decided to start a blog. And then we decided to challenge ourselves because we wanted to draw attention to how dependent Americans have become on processed food and just show that a typical suburban family could survive without it. So we came up with the idea for our 100 day pledge. So um, that sort of is the, I guess that's the shorter answer to that. But um, let me see if I can get to some of these questions too. Oh, Jonathan, what was the most surprising part of your DNA results? So I sort of alluded to this at the beginning. Um, for me, the surprising part was that I saw, you know, Jewish in my heritage, which was not a surprise because I know my mom's side of the family is Jewish, but I often think of that as a religion, you know, not part of my culture. So it was just like really interesting to see that there and a good reminder. Um, and Patty is asking if it would be good with ground turkey or ground chicken. Yeah, I think you could totally add that instead of ground beef if you prefer in the recipe. So um, let's see, not food related. Oh, granite and paint colors, Paul. I don't I don't remember the name I of this. Did. Oh, what's the name of the granite? The, no, can you see me? Oh, it's, and, it's honed granite, by Yeah, the so way. the granite is river white and it's honed so it's not shiny. We did that for photographs and videoing so you don't get reflections. I like how it looks And we just too. like how it looks too. And then um, the paint color on the cabinets, it's, I think it's called um, it's like something stone. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. If yeah. we can, we can leave it in the comments. But um, okay, so Aaron, I will post this recipe. It's already on the blog, 100daysofrealfood.com. It's under Shepherd's Pie, but we did the cottage pie version. Um, but I'll share the link. And um, Rhea said she just purchased Michael Pollan's book, and you're scared to read it. Yeah, it's. Definitely, I had always heard, you know, eat your vegetables, eat your whole grains, but I never really understood the why behind it, and that was what was very enlightening and basically changed our lives. So, um, so oh, good, Paul. I'm glad that you're getting some inspiration <laughs> from the kitchen. And Candace, again, we were making cottage pie because we um, we found out from our ancestry DNA results that. We are mostly, the leek side is mostly British and we thought it'd be fun to make a British recipe. So don't forget if you wanna do the Ancestry DNA kit, let me make sure I get the 
um, website right. It's ancestry.com slash 100 days for 10% off. It's super fun. The kids were so excited to get the results and analyze all of it with us. So, oh, thank you, Ashley. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the video. And, oh, Rhea, I'm glad you're enjoying my new cookbook as well. And I will go on after we're done eating dinner and try to answer some more comments and things. So thanks for joining in tonight. And you guys have a great evening. I hope you have a great dinner too, whatever you're having. Bye. Bye.